Hello booktube, welcome to Lizzie Faye Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and today's Friday so I thought I should do a Friday Reads and I am also thinking about filming a little video about our experiences surviving the hurricane and and how things have been you know over the last few days our power did come back on yesterday but um, our refrigerator is is out so uh, today just downtown they were handing out some food and water for anyone who needed it and I thought you know we could live without it but since we don't have a refrigerator that um, you know is handy in the house we do have one in the motorhome but um, you know it's just a little little bitty thing and and I thought, you know, it, I may as well just go ahead and take advantage of the food. So I thought it might be kind of fun to do an unboxing of the FEMA food and let you see what you get when you have been through a disaster. And so if you're interested in that, then uh, let me know and I will possibly do a little video of that. But meanwhile, I thought I would just let you know about what I've been reading. Now, I haven't gotten as much accomplished this week, this past week, as far as reading goes, as I had hoped to. Well, you might I'd say, well, duh, you went through a hurricane, and, and that was part of it. It was a little hard to focus and concentrate when there was so much to do and, you know, when you have to uh, just kind of change your your pattern of living and, and everything, but we kind of did have fun when the power was out. We played more games by candlelight, and, um, you know, it, it was just fun, but, uh, but of course, we're glad that the power's back on, and it's good to have air conditioning. Um, there are still, still quite a few stores that are not open, and, and businesses, and um, so there is still a lot of stuff that is not back to normal yet. Um, but one thing I had hoped to do was to listen to some books on CD with my battery-operated CD player. I, it, it has the function to go by battery or a plug, and that's usually, you know, I listen to it uh, plugged in most of the time. It sits in my kitchen, and I had bought two full sets of batteries so that I could, you know, use it as a battery-operated CD player and it just would not work. The function, the switch over to the CD power, or to the battery power, just wasn't happening. And so the only way I had of listening to books on CD was in the car. And we were in the car some, but a lot of times Randy was with us, and um, even when it was just Katie and me and, and Emily, then um, it was still just, I, I couldn't focus on it. Uh, the book I was listening to in the car is The Dark Prophecy by Rick Riordan, and I just had a hard time following it so far on audio. In fact, just this morning, I went back and started it in print, and I'm enjoying it a lot more. Now, I remember little snippets of things that have been happening over the first two discs, but I missed how they all segue together because these books are so fast paced that I'm just having a hard time following it. Uh, and the Kane Chronicles were very similar. I had a similar experience. Um, so I found that uh, listening to the Kane Chronicles was not as good of an experience as to just read them. So I'm going to go ahead probably and still finish the audio, but come back behind it and read it in print too. Uh, then the other book that I was listening to before the storm hit on CD is uh, The Banana Cream Pie Murder by Joanne Fluke. And this is the most recent book in this series. It's book 21. I have read or listened to all of the books leading up to this. This is about a cookie baker. Hannah Swinson owns a bakery and tends to find bodies around her town of Lake Eden, Minnesota. And this particular time, though, she didn't find a body, but her mother did. And as is with most of these books, the victim, when they were killed, was eating something that was baked by Hannah. And that is the case of this book. So it's, it's a fun formula for a mystery series, and I've really been enjoying them. So I am... Oh, goodness, I don't have a bookmark in this one. I'm not sure how far I've gotten. Uh, not quite to the halfway point yet in this, and I have not really, uh, I've not picked back up on audio since we got power yesterday. Um, I may, I probably will go ahead and listen to some of this today, but I also have a third audio book going on my phone. I have been listening to the Cherry Cola Book Club by Ashton Lee, and I read a chapter of this for a try a chapter tag 
oh, several months ago, and I read it, I read that chapter in print. Now, I'm listening to this in audio, and I have to say, I really think I'm enjoying the audio more. Uh, I neglected to look up the narrator, but when I'm doing a wrap-up and mentioning this book again later, or maybe by next Friday Reads, then I will uh, do my best to let you know who the narrator is. It is a female narrator, and she does a great job with the southern drawl. I'm not even speeding it up. I'm really enjoying her voice, and uh, I think I'm enjoying the, I think I said it, I'm enjoying the audio really more than me reading it in print. So I'm happy about that. This was originally recommended to me by Katherine Stevens, one of my subscribers, who also recommended the Philip Gully Harmony series to me, which I love. So Katherine, keep up the great recommendations. You seem to know exactly what I'm going to enjoy, and, uh, and I thank you for that. So this is a lot of fun. There are five books in this series. Then um, a couple of other series, I guess actually one other series that I have started is on my Kindle, and it is the first book in the Spencer Funeral Home Niag Niagara Cozy Mystery Series by Janice J. Richardson, and Janice contacted me about reading some of the books in this series a while back and I told her I would love to. She sent me enough Amazon credits to get the first three books and I think the fourth one is out by now and I'm really enjoying it. It is about a young woman who grew up helping her uncle in his funeral home and now he has died and left her the funeral home. She has all the training now that's necessary and she is um, has taken over the funeral home and is, is running it and this starts right out when she has just taken over and one of her first calls is a coroner call where she has to go and transfer a body from a crime scene to uh, I believe the morgue and then once there's an autopsy and everything then I guess she'll probably take the body from there. Um, so I guess that's how she's going to get involved in the mystery of it. I really haven't gotten that far in the book. I'm about 20% in. But I think it's going to be a great series and, uh, and a really fun book to read. So I appreciate uh, Janice for sending me that. And then, so you may have noticed that um, the first two, the last two books I mentioned are books that um, that are the beginning of a series. I said that I was going to focus on finishing series, and I am. I have five different series that I need one more book to read to finish that series, and I really, really am going to get those done this month. But um, I wanted to go ahead and start Casket Cash because it's on my Kindle, and I read it predominantly at night because we were you know, out of power, and so I wanted to conserve it. I didn't read it at, during the day except maybe a tiny bit, um, but I started out with my Kindle at 100% when the power went out, and, uh, and, and it's right now at about 50%. So I did not tax it too much. I didn't know how long the power was going to be out, and I wanted to always have something that I could read at night without having to worry about charging it up. We could charge our phones in the car, but this would have to be charged with an electrical outlet. So I did really good. Now that our power is back on, I'll be able to um, go at this a little more, uh, a little quicker, and, uh, and, and read it. I'm enjoying it. And I also have uh, the next two. I'm probably just going to read the first one this month, but, uh, but I've got the first three on my Kindle that I can read whenever I'm ready to. And then um, I've got one more book that is not a series book that I started back at the end of August. It's The Kitchen House by Kathleen Grissom. I wanted to go ahead and read this because this is our book club pick for next month. And um, I, I don't know, for some reason I just had a feeling it was going to take me a while to get into. I don't have access to the audio. <clears throat> and it has... It's been hard to get into it, maybe because it's kind of a tough read. There's tough things going on. It's about uh, a plantation that has slavery, and you know that kind of stuff is is really rough. In fact, I got to a spot uh, just yesterday, and I and I just I, I could see something coming, and I just had to close the book and put it down for a little bit. But the book is really great. Uh, I think it was um, one of my subscribers. I think it was Two Boys Scrappin' said that she had read this uh, a few years ago for book club, and that it really left an impression.
impression on her, and I think that's going to be true of me as well. Um, it, it really is a, a good book. It's told from two perspectives. The um, the majority of the story is told through the eyes of Lavinia, who is a young girl who was orphaned on the ship coming from Ireland to America, and because her parents, I suppose, were indentured to the captain, then even though they died, her and her brother are indentured to the captain now. And the captain decides to, uh, I guess, trade off or sell her brother and, and keep her. And then he puts her in the care of his, Ill Ill excuse me, his illegitimate slave daughter, Belle. And some of the perspective is also told through Belle's eyes. But Belle's chapters are a lot more brief than Lavinia's. But you get the two perspectives, Belle and Lavinia. And uh, I'm about halfway through it now. What I finally had to do about on around the 9th or 10th, I realized that I was just not very far into this at all. And I said, you know, I'm going to have to see how many days are left in the month and just divide it out that way and see what is the minimum I have to read every day to get this book at least read by the end of the month. And because that's as long as I'm willing to go, I want to have it read by the end of this month. And it came out to 16 pages of from what I had left. So that is my goal now to read at least 16 pages. But I find that I'm reading more like 20. <clears throat> and then that frees me up then to do other things, read other things. And, um, you know, because we've had a life after a storm with no power can uh, is different. There's different things to do. And so my regular routines and patterns were different. And it was just hard to sit down and, and read. But then there were times when it was just too hot to do anything else. And, uh, and so I would sit outside or sit someplace with my battery fan and, and read a few pages. Um, but anyway, uh, it's been really good. And I I may even finish it by next week <clears throat> because always the second half of a book goes faster for me than the first half. So we'll just see, but for sure by the end of the month. So those five books are what I am currently reading. I have the four here plus the book on my Kindle. And I don't know if I will start anything else before... I see you again next Friday. If I do, I'll just tell you about it then. I, I probably will. I mean, otherwise I'm not even going to come close to my reading goals. Um, oh, uh, probably one that I will start if it comes in on time is The Air. I've ordered this on audio from the library and it's currently checked out. So that's why I didn't get it before the storm hit. But after the storm, uh, we were in another town that did have power and we noticed that the library was open. So I looked on their shelf and I was able to pick up the audio of The Crown. Well, of course, I'm not going to listen to it until I listen to the air, but um, I'm excited that uh, that now I have The Crown in print so that as soon as I can get it, then I'll be able to listen to this as well. I mentioned in one of my last couple of videos that I was waiting for this to come out in paperback. Well, a couple of days ago, the girls and I were out kind of looking for looking for power, looking for ice and things like that. And uh, a shopping center that's not too far from here apparently didn't lose power or they only lost it for a very short time. And there's a Books A Million in that shopping center. So we went into Books A Million and I discovered that The Crown is now on paperback. So I'm excited. I also looked at um, for the Lunar Chronicles because I have most of those on in paperback and I wanted to see if they had Winter and Stars Above. And and they were out of winter, but they did have stars above. So I didn't get that yet because there was another book Katie saw as we were coming in to the store. They always have the carts out front with the discounted books. And she noticed that they had uh, one copy of The Beauty of Darkness and bargain priced at $6.97. So um, she was like, yeah, I really want those. I really want those. We've both read the first one, but we have not read the second two. And so I decided, decided to go ahead and get this for her and then um, The Crown and I will come back later and get the Lunar Chronicles when they're both in stock. Um, so what I did tell Katie, though, I said that if I get this for you, and you know, and this one, which I want to read, you know, they're for me too. Uh, but I said, I want you to actually read something that's related to uh, one of these series. I said, because you've hardly read anything through this whole
whole storm. And she said, well, I've been rereading Harry Potter. And, and that's true. She has reread the first two Harry Potter books. But she reads so fast that she's read these several times that, you know, it probably takes her about an hour to read each one of these. Um, but I said, well, that's true, you know, but those are just rereads and I want you to, you know, either read something from these series or something you haven't read or something like that. So she came home and she pulled out the air and she read that and then uh, and reread it. She had read both of these on her tablet uh, a couple of years ago when they first came out. And so then she reread the air and then because that kind of put her in a selection mood, then yesterday she went back and got the selection and has read about 70 pages of this. So um, at least she's reading something even if it's a uh, reread. So that's fine. Uh, so that's what Katie has been reading while the storm has been out. She's mostly been addicted to Netflix. And because we have uh, unlimited data on our phones through today, she's been um, listening to Netflix. And then we've been recharging our phones in the car. And um, uh, I think my battery is about to die. But uh, I'll have to hurry and uh, wrap this up. Uh, so we have had um, an experience with Hurricane Irma and I'm glad that I was still able to read and listen to uh, a little bit of books while um, while this was going on and hopefully now I can pick up my pace a little bit since I haven't read as much as I would like to but um, you know it is what it is and the books will be there next month still if I don't get them all read this month. So that's all I have for this video. Let me know if you would like for me to do another little hurricane video and maybe show you the uh, unboxing of the FEMA food and uh, if you're curious about what uh, what is in that. And uh, I could also show you around our neighborhood a little bit. Mostly what's here now, at least in my neighborhood, is that every house has a big pile of brush in front of it and behind it. And, uh, you know, there's still some brush on the side streets, um, just little bits of stuff. So that's that's mostly what it is uh, right now. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.